Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome. So today's Thursday, and you're probably wondering what new and exciting update has been added this week by the Space Engineers developers. Well, as usual, we've got a whole variety of number of tweaks to the HUD, the gameplay, and a variety of other things that are done directly affect us. But let's get started by actually having a look at the G menu. So the G menu is accessed here and it's normally used to place blocks. Now you may notice that it's just a little bit different. We've actually got it a little bit more precise and we can actually search for items. So if we want to look for staircases, we can start searching for stairs and we can actually see that it's come up. And if you like me, sometimes the item is actually staring you right in the face and you can't actually find it. You spend an extra few minutes when it's right there in the middle of the screen. And they've also got some subcategories, so weapons and tools, just making it a little bit easier for you to access as well as control. So you can simply run through these little menus and you can find the things that you want really fast and I have to say this is just a great new little feature to have a mess around with so we can go to the cockpit blocks and we can just grab what we need fast rather than searching through the menu and taking absolutely ages a great new feature but let's continue now if you're like me you do like to make your odd multiplayer scenario and sometimes you need certain items like ammunition, crates, weapons, drills to actually do that but now we're in creative, creative mode what we can actually do is hit shift F10 and it brings up a spawn menu so we can select all the spawnable items in the game so say for instance we want to spawn a few computer parts maybe we're building some sort of map where you have to construct a ship and escape the planet so we want to spawn one of them so if we click spawn object it spawns in front of us and then all we have to do is click a kill in and there we go it's on the floor we can actually pick that up interact with it really good and it's perfect for building sort of team deathmatch style matches as well where you can grab the actual weapons you can grab an automatic rifle you can slap one in the game and what you can do with it there is actually move it into position now there doesn't seem to be any rotation features for these just yet but eventually maybe that could be added as well so you can slap these on sort of a desk perhaps or you can even put it on something that's actually a bit more stable than it just wobbling off just like that but it's a really nice feature and it's going to allow us to do a lot of different things as well as well as building them scenarios and putting them crates in without having to search through and taking ages to build the items that we actually want but let's continue on so the next feature that was added was another option to the sensor block so if we press k on the sensor block we can actually have a look that there is a natural ability to detect asteroids so this means we can actually use it in a whole variety of sort of sensory mining ships so we can actually direct these and lead these on to actually harvest an asteroid so let's select our sensors here turn the player option off and activate the detect asteroid mode now we're going to power this up by activating it like so activate and then we're going to activate the small thruster and give it some gentle propulsion forward and we're going to finally activate the drill block so what we're going to see now is the actual asteroid being tracked by this device now i'm just going to do a number of little tests so we'll move another one say for instance over here and we'll see exactly what's going to go on and i think what we'll also try so we'll aim one off in the wrong direction and see if it corrects itself or if it just simply goes crazy. Now that seems to be moving towards the asteroid. Maybe I placed a little bit too many. There's too many sort of sensors going on. Maybe the drill's actually knocking it off. There we go. You can actually see it's detecting the asteroid and it's turning towards it. That one's working fine. That one's sensing there. That one's just turning in towards the asteroid now as we see. Just a little bit slow because there's a lot of sensors on a lot of different sorts of levels of processing but these ones are doing absolutely fine targeting into the asteroid and propelling it forward at the same moment so you can see there's some slight turn in there but the asteroid's actually still trying to be picked up on the sensors and that's proven a little bit problematic by the look of it so we're gonna have to try that maybe one more time we'll put it a little bit further away to help it out a bit further so there's a little bit of lag especially with sensors sensors always tend to be a little bit problematic when it comes to sort of lag issues so there we go you can see how it turns directly towards the asteroid and it's going to head towards it that one must have been a little bit of a broken one and then one's down there digging straight inside so we'll aim another one up there see exactly what's going on causing a little bit of lag it's absolutely beautiful seeing these little monster things at work so you can see how they're digging right into the side that one's doing quite well look at that massive hole it's dug that one's following up in second sort of place just a really nice sort of way of adding more features to the sensory block 
Anyhow, let's move on. Now, the final feature of this update we're going to have a look at is antennas. Now, antennas have received one new feature, and the feature basically allows us to see the broadcast range. So, now we can't see anything, and this is pretty hard if you're flying a drone. You don't want to leave the actual area of the antenna. So, if we head over here, and we access the info panel, and we show antenna range, you'll notice that this sort of dome appears around us. And as long as we're actually within the dome, like you can see on these smaller ones, the actual dome will appear. Now, what you may notice of these smaller antennas is that I'm not actually within the dome of them other antennas down there, but due to me actually having ownership of all these antennas in this area, what it allows me to do is actually shows me how they're actually connected to one another. So you can see how this dome overlays this next dome and it's showing their actual connection, extending the length. So, on a larger scale, that could be used to project a signal to drones at a much further distance. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today. It was a rather small update, but it had some rather useful features, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do with them.